heading across the tide So, I'm starting off down here somewhere, and let's say there's a, there's a buoy here that I'm starting from, uh, and I've got our normal sort of series of uh, uh, buoys, and I want to get to that one. And again, the tide is going in this direction. Well, what you do is, again, you stop the boat facing into the, uh, the tide. And that tells you what the tide is, is doing at that point. Let's say I want to go to there. Well, what I would actually do is I would actually plan a, a course that took me off in this direction to a point that was here on this contour. And to allow for the tide, let's say again it's doing two knots. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to mark in two knots of uh, tide. And if you're crossing the tide, always go at the maximum speed that you can. So ask for six or seven knots. Don't do it slowly, ask for six or seven knots. And open up your dividers to your, say, six knots. Like so, and ask for that heading. And what's going to happen is you're going to come across to this contour. As soon as you find the contour, hang a right, follow it along until you find that one, and then once you've found that one, great, we can do the same trick that we did down here. Now, the problem you're going to get on the Solent, if you're using two miles, and six miles, you're going to be trying to open your dividers up to, to a, a size that goes right away across the, um, uh, across the chart. Mm. The trick is, don't use miles, use either inches or centimetres of the side of your plotter. If you stop the boat here, alongside the buoy, so in relation to the buoy you are stopped, you are stationary, you are going through the water at the same speed that the tide is going in that direction, are you not? So let's say the tide is, is going in this direction. Okay. If you're stopped alongside the buoy, then you can immediately read off your log what the tide is doing for you. So you've got, the tide, you've got the tide speed, and let's say that the tide is doing two knots. The next thing you check is you get nice and close to the buoy. But how do you find out that the tide was doing two knots? Because you've stopped, you stopped the boat alongside the buoy. Yeah. The tide is going <coughs> the buoy, so the speed that the boat is going through the, the, the water to remain stationary oh. in relation to the buoy is the speed that the tide is against you. Oh, that makes sense. Which you, which you read off the, the log. Sometimes the log is turning so slowly mm. that you've just got to look at it and go, well, I'm going to call that a knot or knot and a half or, or whatever. So we know what speed the tide is doing. The next thing we do is we look at the depth. So we get close to the buoy and we look at the depth. And let's say that we found that in, say, 23 metres of water. What depth are we going to find that one in? Uh, 13. 13. Yeah, so that's resolved that bit of the puzzle already, isn't it? So we're going to find that one in 13 metres because we had 23 metres under our keel here. We're going to expect to see 13 metres under our keel here. 
So what you could do, theoretically, is simply come across the 13 <coughs> metres, follow 13 metres, and you get people saying, saying, sitting down in the cabin saying, OK, uh, just, just get on the 13 metre line and follow 13 metres. Don't go uh, below 12, don't go above 14. But if that's all you do, then you're missing a lot of uh, information. The way I do it is this. I say, OK, I know what depth I'm expecting to find that in. I start my uh, heading off on a course. Typically what I would do is I'd aim for a point that was about there. So I know that I'm going to be this side of the boy. If all I do is just take a true heading from there down to there, just put the plotter on the, uh, the chart, I'm going to head down to head in that direction. I'll probably actually end up about here, bearing in mind what the tide's doing to me. Mm -hmm. But I say to my, my, my people, right, okay, what I want you to do is uh, steer, what does that look like? Yeah, 130 degrees. Um, and uh, can you make five knots? And tell me when you're leaving the buoy. So they head off, 130 degrees, make a note of the time here. Yeah. And you can estimate how long it's going to take you to get there. Maybe a rough guess. Okay, no matter what, it's going to take about three or four minutes to get there. And you're sitting down below watching the depth because it's getting shallower and shallower and shallower. And when you your depth reads 13 meters, you know that you are on this contour. So then, what you can do is you can say to your uh, uh, helm, right, steer zero nine zero degrees. So they've now turned and they're facing towards this buoy and you're just watching the depth. If the depth gets shallow, you simply say, okay, I want 10 degrees of port. If it uh, gets deeper, you ask for 10 degrees to starboard. And what should happen is you're down below going 10 degrees of port, 10 degrees to starboard, maybe 15, maybe 20. And the person on the helm is saying back to you what actual heading they are then steering. Well, what's going to happen next? You're going to arrive at this buoy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Stop the boat and measure what the tide is doing to you. Now, bear in mind we're now in 10 metres of water <coughs> rather than, or 13 metres of water rather than 23. We can expect the tide to be running a little more slowly. So we want to check again what the tide is, uh, is doing. And where we're following a contour like this, the tide runs parallel to the contours. That's how the contours got there in the first place. Yeah. So what you can do is you can say, all right, I'm going to set you off on a general heading, which is still 090 degrees. Check the depth, check the speed of the tide. Let's say it's still doing two knots to make the, uh, the numbers easy. And let's say that I'm going to be making six knots over the ground. So Two knots of tide. <coughs> That's the speed of the tide. Six knots boat speed. Six knots of boat speed. What speed am I going to make over the ground? Four. Okay, so I'm going to make four knots over the ground, aren't I? And I can set these people off, tell them to tell me when they're starting tell them to head at six knots in this direction. Mm. Then we can implement the thing called the six minutes rule. So at this point, are you following the 10 metre contour line? Mark all over. Yeah, yeah, at the moment, I'm just, just here at the moment, I'm yeah. just planning this at the moment, I'm sitting here. Oh, you haven't moved yet. Okay, okay. I haven't moved yet. I'm about to set people off. Yeah. Okay, and I'm, can I make that something, can I make that slightly different, just to make the numbers easier? Let's say that that is uh, seven knots of uh, uh, boat speed. What speed am I going to make over the round? Five. Okay, I'm going to make five. So I'm going to make five knots over the ground. In, if I'm doing five knots, bearing in mind that six minutes is one 
tenth of uh, an hour, how far am I going to go in six minutes? From uh, half, a, half, a half a mile. All you do is move the decimal point back one, doesn't it? If I'm making five miles per hour, move the decimal point back one, 0.5, and then what I can do is I can set my uh, people off and I can say, right, in six minutes, measuring from my <coughs> latitude scale, 0.5 of a mile, if that was, say, 0.5 of a mile, I can say I'll be there in six minutes, there in 12 minutes, there would be 18 minutes. I'm going to arrive at my destination in slightly less than 18 minutes. You set them off at that uh, speed that you uh, asked for, seven knots, on a general heading of 090, and you're sitting down below and you're saying, okay, 10 degrees to port, 10 degrees to starboard. Now, generally speaking, all the way along here, the heading isn't going to change very much, isn't it? is not it? But if they start saying to you that the heading is now turning in this direction, well, so you ask them to follow the contour line no, again? No, you don't know. You, you don't ask them to do anything. Okay. You simply ask them to steer a heading. Okay. Okay? And you are monitoring whether they're turning to port or turning mm -hmm. to starboard. And then when you get to this point here, you know that because they're repeating back to you that the heading is changing, it's reducing, you must be going around that corner. And if you've got the situation where you've got a, a, a very you know, specific lump in the, uh, in, in the contour, then you can tell immediately that you are at that, at that point, which is really useful. If all you're saying is follow the contour, you're missing a huge amount of information. Yeah. When you get to this one, and you will get to this one, I promise you, you can then adjust your timing. If you arrive a little earlier, either you so, were going faster than so, you thought. Yeah, so you might just confused. If we say, tell, you tell them a heading, so you say to them, go uh, 090 yeah. uh, and go along that course, then why, when do they decide to go north? They and don't. What's you that? do. Okay. You do, because you're sitting looking at the depth. Yeah. Okay. And then you see, obviously, the depth, uh, the, okay. the, depth, the depth is getting shallower. As the depth gets shallower, yeah. okay, you say... You know you must be getting to the point where, basically, that contour line swings north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you then say to them, now steer course of... No, no, you don't ask for a specific course. You simply say 10 degrees to port, 10 degrees to start, okay. or 15, whatever okay. you think is appropriate. Okay. They then repeat back to you what the course is. Okay. If it's still getting shallow, you'd last for another five degrees, okay, ten okay, degrees, or, or okay, whatever. Okay. And that way you can follow exactly what's happening on the okay, contours on, okay. the, on the chart. Now, if you get to this boy sooner than expected, one of two things is happening. Either there's not quite as much time right. running, or you're going faster than you thought. So you can adjust your estimates of when you're expecting to get to the next one, and you can do exactly the same process to get to the next one. Okay. So if you're running with the tide, that's all you have to do. I haven't touched a book. Yeah. All I've done is put the boat alongside the buoy, um, mess about with the chart, and go on with it to about there, head off on this general heading. But then oh. with the third buoy, you would basically, again, slow the boat down again, measure yeah. the tidal stream. Um, yeah, so exactly the same thing yeah, there as we yeah, did back there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Which is all very well and good if you are going to be going along a contour and picking mm -hmm. up a boy. Dead easy that way. If, however, I'd call it real world now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Like <laughs> yeah, feeling quietly confident that I have passed my general knowledge exam of the day skipper theory course. It's Saturday the 26th today. We started day skipper theory uh, last Monday as we're classroom training for a week now. One more day to go tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, but on the whole it's been an interesting day just refreshing all the general knowledge that we need to really have for uh, being and becoming a day skipper. Um, as you might remember, I am already one, but uh, you know, nonetheless, it was really good and useful to go back over all the syllabus uh, and understand um, 
really also relearn all the collision regulations, which is quite important. So you really have to know uh, who is the stand-on vessel or who is the giveaway vessel. It's the same as when you operate a car on the road, you have to know whether you have right of way or somebody else does. So yeah, hopefully I will get a pass, but I'm sure you will hear about it. Saturday evening, we just finished dinner. We're trying to actually get rid of the evidence uh, we ordered. We walked into town earlier and tried to get dinner in town, but everywhere was full. So um, don't want to advertise really, but you, know, you get the hint of where this is from. Um, we had a lovely pizza uh, and we're just trying to destroy the evidence and shove it into a rather small bin. Uh, re regarding the exam that we said earlier today, so this was the general knowledge exam for day skipper. Um, I think all of us but one managed to pass, uh, all the four guys here, so me included. We know we have all passed, so we were actually quite jolly. We had a couple of uh, beers at the pub, um, and up until recently we had literally one bottle of wine left. So we bought two bottles of wine as a bit of celebratory drink uh, and didn't really manage to finish it. So that shows you true sailors, um, you know, not, not drinking that much really. Anyway, signing off, a uh, fairly boring Saturday evening. We have two more days of theory to go and then final exam on Monday, uh, but so far so good. We're, oh, we're hopefully agreed that we're never going to go here, nor are we ever going to go there. But remember the six minute rule? Yeah. Okay. What you can do is you can take the distance that you would run in six minutes mm. and you can mark it on this line here. So you say, okay, I'm not going there, but if I was heading in this direction, my water track would take me six minutes down there, six minutes, uh, another six minutes here. It's a parallelogram. If you draw a line parallel to the tide, in six minutes, you will be there. Simple as that. And then what you can do is just loop back, okay? Once you've actually done that, you can say, well, six minutes to there, 12 minutes to there, 18 minutes to there, about 20 minutes, I'm going to start hitting that contour. It's all there is to blind that, as far as I'm concerned. You don't need to do anything else. You just uh, Does that answer your question, Greg? Good morning. It's Monday. Uh, two weeks of theory and classroom training are almost over. So I'm about to leave my room um, that I spent the last two weeks in. Uh, we will be moving on to our next boat this afternoon uh, at four o'clock. I think we can take possession of it. And uh, yeah, I need to vacate my room now by nine o'clock this morning. Uh, so I packed everything last night, just stripped the bed, uh, had a shower and uh, we'll just be going to breakfast now and then I need to see what I'm going to do with all the things um, uh, because my locker is pretty full already so I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to fit everything in uh, so I need to figure out a way of where I can store the rest until we can get onto the boat this afternoon. Um, yeah, as far as day skipper is concerned, uh, it was a full-on week. Um, uh, the exam for general knowledge was uh, on uh, Friday, no sorry, on Saturday. Um, which I've passed, so that's good news. Um, there's going to be another exam today, which is pretty much um, around chart work. So we did that all day again yesterday, which was uh, very useful. I think we're going to have another mop-up session this morning just to go through the syllabus to cover anything we haven't really talked about um, at an in-depth level yet, uh, but that should be fairly short. And then I think we'll sit the exam this afternoon and hopefully we'll all be out of the classroom by about three, half past three. It's another quite nice day today um, and we got some uh, high level cirrus clouds while well, we learned about meteorology let me tell you uh, warm fronts cold fronts low pressure high pressure occluded fronts um, um, yeah cirrus clouds stratus clouds nimbus clouds um, so that's all part of the syllabus that you have to know because of course when you go sailing you need to understand what the weather forecast is saying which to be fair for the uk is is excellent uh, because you got the Met Office uh, producing it and uh, you got it uh, broken down by different regions. Uh, if you listen to Radio 4 in the morning, 
uh, here in the UK or you tune in from any, anywhere in the world, uh, obviously uh, the weather forecast is, is excellent. It, it breaks it down uh, in a very schematic form uh, by regions and, and details how the weather is going to be this day in the next 24 hours and then beyond. So very, very good. Uh, and that's also what we're going to be using um, actually for this week. We're going to be using the inshore forecast. Uh, again, available uh, from the Met Office as, as one of the possible sources. But yeah, uh, I'm actually excited and uh, grateful for being able to get back on the boat and go, go out because, as I said, the weather is still quite nice and, uh, you know, it should be a fun week ahead, hopefully. Uh, young Flo here from Munich is a bit camera shy, but uh, he just told me all about the weather forecast for next week. Come on, Flo, you have a nice day socially distanced. So, What's going to be happening next uh, week? It's going to be good weather till next week's Sunday and then on Monday it's going to be really windy, probably around 40 knots. That's our last day though. Yeah. So should, we should be fine. Yeah, so, I mean Tuesday is the last day, okay. then, so okay. Monday is the last okay. day we sail. So uh, hopefully it's going to be a good week, it's very nice and calm, actually the weather, the weather has warmed up quite a bit. Um, last couple of hours in the, in the classroom and then we're going to take possession of the boat at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Happy days. Just finished lunch. Um, it's uh, seven past one now. Uh, we're starting the exam, the navigational part of the day skipper exam at quarter past. So last hours of classroom training this morning uh, to go over the remaining syllabus um, and also answer any questions that people had in relation to uh, navigation, the navigational aspects uh, that has all been um, answered. Um, I think, uh, you know, I feel fairly confident, quietly confident um, that I should be okay for the exam. Uh, Ian, our instructor, has been uh, very patient explaining everything. We have uh, practiced a lot um, in the second half of the week as far as chart work is concerned. Um, so hopefully this will be uh, a piece of cake um, uh, We'll see how it goes, but uh, as I said, feeling quietly optimistic and uh, hope uh, later on I will be smiling. Are you, are you planning our dinner yeah. tonight? I am, and Dees keeps saying from away. It's the person behind the camera. We're actually having a sneaky, uh, sneaky dinner tonight, last proper meal before we get on the boat, but uh, I think all the meals on the boat qualify as proper dinners because they're all hand cooked, the home cooked <laughs> and with love. So. And all. Exam is done, just waiting for the results now. So we left all left the room. Uh, Ian is up there uh, actually going through it and just making sure uh, we answered everything correctly, which I'm not sure we did. I'm, I'm hoping I got uh, everything right, but uh, the first questions threw me a little bit. I have to be perfectly honest. Uh, I was surprised that there wasn't a tidal vector um, um, uh, of any uh, really of any uh, name worth calling it a tidal vector because it was pretty much pointing in the direction we were steering and going um, so that that irritated me a bit and I thought I must have made a mistake so I was checking and double checking and triple checking so the first question took me about an hour to complete which was way too much time but uh, thankfully I got through um, question two and three uh, reasonably quickly so I finished in the allotted time um, but yeah question one uh, definitely one for the storybooks um, if, if I in fact plotted it correctly which I hope I did but I've you know quadruple checked everything and uh, uh, convinced myself in the end that I've done it right so hopefully it will just be a, a strange uh, a strange uh, vector uh, to plot and then uh, to plot the course over ground so hopefully uh, sorry course to steer uh, so hopefully we'll all be correct uh, I will find out in a couple of minutes